Okay, hello again everybody. It's Grampy one more time. Probably more than one more time, but uh, just to give you all a little hope that this pain and agony will stop. Uh, I said one more time, but I'll probably keep recording because, I don't know, it makes me happy. As long as Bandicam works. I've been having a real trouble with Bandicam. It's been cutting off my audio like a half a minute before the recording is done. So I've been trying to figure that out and solving Bandicam's problems for them. I'm going to send them a bill here pretty soon because I think I finally got it figured out. But anyway, here I am at the Chateau. I'm at Chateau de Grampy, where I usually am, with uh, purple nether uh, portal effects flying around and the Chateau in the background. And uh, here we are. So we are here. Let me turn my phone off. Thank you very much. So uh, we are here. Um, at the Chateau and um, there's my village I'm getting ready to build a little village city there's you can see the first house that I built right there uh, there's a village here Trep and I already kidnapped all the villagers for our individual villager trading halls but um, I built the first house it's pretty cool I'm gonna build a bunch of them out there uh, in that same style not exactly like that but but in the same style. So to make a little desert city. That's just one of the unfinished projects that'll never get finished. Um, so anyway, let's go in. I want Here's what I want to show you. I want to show you my new um, potion brewing system. I call it mine. It's the one that Tango did a tutorial on and then built on Hermitcraft. So if you've seen that, uh, you've seen it already, but because that's all I built. But if you haven't seen it, it is unbelievable. It's cool. Tango, you know, if you don't watch Tango Tech, uh, he's a uh, he's an amazing, you know, redstone mad scientist who can just figure anything out. And uh, here's the library. You know what makes makes me mad is these skulls, either wither skulls or regular skulls. You can't put a torch on top of them. I thought that would be a cool, you know, skull candle effect, but uh, you can't do it. So anyway, so anyway, here's the castle. I've done videos of this before. Um, <clears throat> and if you've seen it, you know that the entire thing, all four stories, it's a gigantic uh, thing, but none of it is useful for anything other than just looking at, right? So it's useless for from a survival game perspective. So down below here, is where all the survival magic is happening. <laughs> um, this is just the ground level, but down below, a little little bit underground, I have built some stuff. And here's my storage room. So let's go inside. Um, so I've got my storage room, and it's got wings off to the side, the portal on one. Oh, by the way, this is Rock Tiki's axe that he gave me for Christmas. Thank you very much again, Tiki. I, na I named it uh, Tiki's Merry Axmas. <laughs> it was a Silk Touch Efficiency 5 pick and uh, pick axe. And, uh, but it's done, I got so much use out of it, you wouldn't believe it, but it's done now. It's unrepairable and it has one hit left. <laughs> so I put it in a frame. Maybe in 1.9 I can repair it with that new, uh, what's it called, uh, mending. I can repair it with mending, maybe. I'd, I don't know. If not, I'll just leave it in the frame. But off of these wings, I've got different things. Down here, I've got a big industrial smelter. Well, that's just the hallway we came in. Here is where the brewing room is going to go. So Grandpa, Grampy's Brasserie. So I haven't, uh, I haven't finished it yet, so please excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm a long way from done making it look good. Uh, you can see here's my clown floor that uh, it's definitely going to get ripped up and replaced with something. But um, that didn't turn out the way I hoped it would at all. And obviously the ceiling, I haven't done anything there yet. I'm going to cap that off with something nice with glowstone or something. But um, anyway, here it is. I wanted to show it to you because it is absolutely cool. So it's got, this is one pod, and I have six of these. One, two, three on this side, and three on that side. And here's how they work. Each individual pod is set up to brew a one potion or <coughs> excuse me I'm sick sorry to cough at you but um, you can see you can set it up to brew multiple potions 
So this is set up to brew uh, strength and speed just by putting the different main ingredients in this lowest hopper. And then they both use this amplifier. They obviously both use the other one. So each one of these can be set up for multiple potions, which is probably how I'll do it. Except for these first two. These are the two I use the most. I use um, this splash potion of, he of healing because I throw it at my skeletons in my skeleton farm. And I use... Um, I use this extended fire resistance potion uh, because, you know, I'm an idiot and I die frequently in the lava. So, uh, so there you have it. That's how you, so I've got these two set up. Then I'll just rig these, rest of these up with multiple potions and have everything I'd ever use. But let me show you how this works because it is absolutely amazing. So first of all, it's ready for 1.9. So if you don't know, 1.9 is going to require that you inject blaze powder into every single potion that you brew even even the potions that use blaze powder for uh, one of the main ingredients you're still going to have to inject a piece of blaze powder to get it started and that's the change that's coming out in 1.9 this thing is fully ready to accept that and all I need to do is throw some blaze powder in this dropper and I'll be good to go in 1.9 when this interface changes right but it's in the meantime it works great in 1.8 so um, here's how it works you load your ingredients in these droppers you can see in this one I've got a, a uh, amplified health potion with a splash component and then the nether wart so um, you load these ingredients up from bottom to top except for the nether rack you put that at the top and it's the last thing to plop in and starts a new batch each time. So the one thing you have to do is the very first time you start this machine, you have to like manually put a piece of nether ward in it to get it started. And then after that, it is completely fully automatic. And I mean really automatic because here's how it works. It always just brews up a full chest full of your potions. So whenever you come in here, and I've got a full inventory, but let me just eject a few of these. You can see when you start taking them out of the chest, then this thing just automatically kicks on and starts brewing um, more. And it, it'll just brew them up until the chest is full again, and then it'll shut off. So you see those redstone lamps turned off uh, when the chest became unempty, and it'll go back red, er, lit up again when the chest is full, or it'll also light up when one of your ingredients needs to be refilled. That's the other cool thing about this is that it will not brew if you're missing an ingredient. So if you're missing one of your ingredients, it won't like start wasting crap and brewing, you know, nonsense. It'll just stop and light up and, and wait for you to fill it up. So that's how it works. So whenever you need potions, you just come in here and get them out of your chests. And when you leave, it just kicks on and starts filling up your chest again. So uh, what a what a cool design is that cool or what I mean Tango is a, you know he's like this mad scientist with redstone he comes up with great ideas and then he has like the redstone chops to uh, you know to implement all of his ideas well let me show you these are access tunnels back to the redstone I won't bother trying to show you that go watch his video uh, there's it's so compact that I couldn't even really show you but there's a ton of stuff going on here. So every one of these pods has four double chests full of uh, water bottles that are filled with this delivery system that I've got here. I'll show you that. But you can the redstone is just incredible. He's detecting, he's got tons of detection logic going on. So he's detecting when any one of these droppers needs attention, and he's sending that appropriate strength of a signal off to uh, to uh, start locking hoppers when that happens so it won't start brewing that's how he does it he he sends that um, signal and then starts locking hoppers with you know repeaters or writ torches or whatever he needs to do and then uh, when you load up your ingredients it automatically detects that there's stuff in there now and it just automatically starts up again um, to start brewing your stuff so it is just an amazing, and he's doing other cool stuff in here too that I can't even explain. He's, he encountered a real problem with uh, a bud power uh, situation, I guess. I don't know if it's an error in the game or not, but 
these hoppers have a problem. When you power them, they, they sometimes remain on bud power after the power is removed. So when you power them again, they think they're already powered and they don't they don't do what you expect them to do. So he, he worked around that problem with some really cool delaying techniques and that sort of thing. But so here's the redstone. It's uh it's pretty incredible. Uh it was worth it was fun just building it off his tutorial. But here's the water system. If you know, you know, so every one of these six pods has four double chests plus a bunch of hoppers of water bottles. If you've got full water bottles, you can just come throw them in here, but um, uh, nobody ever has those because they're such a, uh, you know, they don't stack. So they're a giant pain to carry around. But uh, empty bottles do stack. So if you've got empty bottles, you can just come into this room and here's how this works. You know, if your inventory is full, when you're filling bottles, it just starts spitting them out. So you can just fill them real fast, spin them into this water channel. And um, when they're done, they will, um, they flow through those hoppers into this same chest there. And then up this uh, dropper elevator, thanks to Mojang for nerfing glass block elevators, you jerks. Um, so I've got this dropper elevator and it's done already. It's a fast one. It's spitting them out and they're flowing around and going down into the into the hoppers above each one of these pods, filling up those four chests. So um, so that's how that works and it it'll just flow all the way around to the other side as well. Oops. It'll flow around to the other side. You can see and fill all that up too. So that's how this works. Anyway, guys, that's the uh, <laughs> that's how it works. Um, thanks for watching. My mouse is freaking out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, putting up with my clown floor and my unfinished ceiling. But I'll keep working on this, and uh, hopefully it'll be uh, cool. I'm going to save those. I'm going to save those. Um, potions before they despawn. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it and see you next time.